Hey, what's up guys? And welcome back to another episode of Chemical Guys Detail Garage. On today's episode, we have a beautiful Subaru WRX. Now this thing is beautiful, but when you look at it up close, it's absolutely filthy. Now the owner of the vehicle has been having to sit for a while. You know, he hasn't driven it much since he's been working from home. So a lot of stuff has accumulated on the surface, such as dirt, debris, grime, fallout. He also lives near where there's a lot of wildfires right now. So a lot of that ash is landing on his car which is going to definitely damage his paint if he doesn't get that off soon. So that's why we're here today. So today we're going to be doing a full deep cleaning on the Subaru WRX to make sure that it's nice and clean and all those contaminants are off the paint so that they don't cause any further damage. So stay tuned. So right here in front of me, I have our traditional two bucket setup. We're going to be using citrus washing gloss because citrus washing gloss is going to give us that citrus power to clean up all that dirt and debris. But it also contains synthetic gloss enhancers that it's also going to give this vehicle a freshly kind of waxed look. So this is definitely going to do an amazing job at giving this car a deep clean and we're going to be using it with our chenille wash mitt now this works out great at safely agitating all that dirt grime and contaminants that are accumulated on the surface of the paint this is gently going to go ahead and knock it right off without us having to do any kind of aggressive movements i also have our two bucket method right here with our two dirt traps now i'm going to go ahead and dunk these in into my water buckets and i'm going to set them towards the bottom because as you can imagine when you're cleaning a vehicle as filthy as this you want to make sure that you're using filtration because if not then you can potentially scratch up your paint now these dirt traps are definitely going to help you out to make sure that all that stuff is filtered with the dirt traps because the last thing you want to worry about is getting all that stuff off your car into your bucket back onto your car and scratching it all up so make sure that when you wash your vehicle have these dirt traps in your two buckets and you're going to have a great detailing session so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my bottle of citrus washing gloss. I'm going to dedicate my red bucket over here, well, the red dirt trap bucket as my soap bucket. And I'm going to keep my blue dirt trap bucket as my water bucket. So first things first, before we begin using our soap, I do want to shake it up. Why? Because remember, this soap, citrus washing gloss, does have synthetic gloss enhancers that you want to make sure to mix up together. So I usually just give it like a quick little shake. And you want to shake it just enough to where it all becomes the same color. Then you'll know that the product is fully mixed together. Check it out, it's all nice and yellow now. Now I can go ahead and open up my spout and I'm gonna put about an ounce in my bucket. I'm gonna put about two ounces in my foam cannon. One ounce, that's more than enough, just a nice good squirt. Now I'm gonna open up my foam cannon here, which I've already pre-filled with water. Just take that off real quick. And I'm just gonna put about an ounce and a half, one squirt, two squirt put my foam cannon head back on it stir it don't shake it because you want to make sure that the product mixes with the water you don't want it to kind of you know foam up in the foam cannon because you want the foam to shoot out from here you don't want the foam to kind of build up in here so stir it up and get your solution ready so once the pressure of the water makes contact with the foam cannon it shoots the foam and the pre-diluted mixture instead of the foam that's in there so now that that's set up, we're good to go. I'm going to grab my wash mitt here and I'm just going to dunk it into my soap bucket just so I can kind of like, you know, just marinate it a little bit, kind of get the soap and the suds kind of building up on that wash mitt. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse the car off. Why? Because remember, for a lot of the stuff that's on this paint, it's a lot of loose debris. So all that ash, all that dirt, all that grime, a lot of that stuff is going to be knocked right off with the water just because remember, the car was just sitting. It's not like it was going off-roading. You know, it's not a lot of grime that's built up on there. It's mainly just a lot of stuff that's on the surface. And, you know, some of the stuff along the sides and the lower panels that kind of, you know, etches on there. But we're going to do our best to clean that up. So I'm going to get my pressure washer, turn that on, give this car a rinse, and then come back to you guys to show you guys the following process. All right, so we just finished rinsing the car. I don't know if you guys paid attention, but there was a lot of dirt and grime that was just knocked off just by us simply you know, rinsing it down with some water. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of stuff that's on the surface that's gonna clean up. And that's definitely gonna help you out with preventing a lot of scratches and swirls during the wash process. Because as you can imagine, all that stuff that was on that paint, that's pretty much the stuff that causes these swirls and scratches. So you wanna make sure to knock all that stuff off and as best as you can so that you have the best and filtered clean. So I'll take off my pressure washer tip. Now I'm gonna connect my foam cannon, get it ready, nice and adjusted. So now that we have our foam cannon connected, it's time for us to give this car a nice thick coat of foam. 
And then we're gonna let that lather for a couple seconds just to kind of knock off a lot of that dirt and debris. And then we're gonna start with their contact wash. So stay tuned. All right, so we just foamed up the car. I did give it about a minute and a half or so to just kind of lather. So I gave it that time so that the citrus washing cloths can pretty much break down all that dirt and grime and stuff that's on the paint. But now it's time for us to actually wipe it down with their wash mitt. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab my pressure washer gun and I'm gonna spray into my soap bucket just to activate the suds. So you guys can see, it doesn't really take much to activate the suds. And you want to make sure to kind of like pressurize the soap bucket so that you get all these nice suds going on so that you have the best lubrication possible. So now that that's good, I'm going to grab my wash mitt, go ahead and stick my hand in there, <clears throat> get some nice suds on there, and now I'm going to start on the car. Now, whenever you're working on the car, you want to make sure that you work from the top and work your way down to prevent cross-contamination from the, you know, the lower parts of the vehicle, which tend to be a lot more grimier, from coming back to the top and then working back and forth. So it's kind of counterproductive. So work your way from top to bottom. I'm going to start on the hood here just to kind of show you guys a little demonstration. And we want to wipe in single motions. Now, you want to wipe in this motion because... This is gonna minimize the amount of chance that you have of installing a swirl mark onto your paint. So if I go ahead and grab my wash mitt and I start doing this stuff right here, if I catch anything on the wash mitt, then that's definitely gonna replicate throughout the entire vehicle. So you wanna make sure that if you do wash a vehicle, do everything in linear motion so that you don't you know, cause that swirl mark effect throughout the vehicle. Very easily, just glide your wash mitt up and down. You can go left and right. Just make sure that if you do do that, just go in straight motions. Once you do a little section of your vehicle, you can come back to your rinse bucket. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off my wash mitt and wring out any kind of dirt and grime that's on there. And then I'm going to come to my rinse bucket here. Now the rinse bucket doesn't have anything. It's just a bucket with water and a dirt trap. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my hand back into my mitt and I'm going to stick it in there. And I'm going to gently kind of scrub the surface of the wash mitt onto that dirt trap. Now that dirt trap is going to knock off any kind of dirt, debris, particles that's on the wash mitt to make sure that there's nothing on there so that the next time I go back into my vehicle, I'm not going to be scratching it up with some grime that I picked up off of it. Take that out your bucket, give that a nice little ring, put your hand back inside, come back to your soap bucket, grab some suds, and you're ready to start washing the remaining part of your vehicle. So now I'm going to finish up washing this car. Like I mentioned, I'm just going to go ahead and work my way around from top to bottom in straight motion and coming back and utilizing this two bucket method. Because remember, I don't want to scratch up the paint. This isn't my car, so I definitely don't want to ruin it. And I just want it to look good. So we're going to go ahead and wash it up, finish washing it up. We're going to dry it and show you guys the results. All right guys, so we're back. The WRX is nice and clean, but after we finished washing the vehicle and we dried it, we took a closer look to the paint and we noticed that it's super contaminated. So in that time that the owner wasn't driving around the vehicle, it was just sitting around collecting dust. A lot of that fine debris, industrial fallout, all that stuff kind of built up on the surface and it's embedded in the paint, which now we want to go ahead and remove. So we want to make sure that the paint is fully cleaned by decontaminating it with the clay bar and we're going to protect it with the coat of jet seal just so that the owner has you know a nicer looking paint it's going to make it much more easier to maintain your paint and it's going to protect it so that stuff like that doesn't etch its way onto it so we're going to go ahead and pull in the car inside so that we can go ahead and get started with the clay bar process all right guys we are inside now car is clean like i mentioned it's super contaminated so we want to knock that off how better way to do it than by using a synthetic clay block now the synthetic clay block, you know, if you've heard of a clay bar, 
A synthetic clay block, it's a synthetic form of a clay bar. So this right here, it's a mixture between rubber and clay that's gonna help you easily decontaminate the surface. The reason it's so cool is because of its versatility. Now this right here, I love using it because it's super easy to grab. As you guys can see, it has a nice thick sponge that you can grab onto. It's not like a little piece of clay that you kind of have to hang on to your life with it, you know, like being very, very careful with it. This right here makes it super easy and super convenient for any kind of new person or you know professional who will just want to have an easier time clay boring this is a great way to do it now the synthetic clay block it's great because like i mentioned it does have a nice sponge to it so you can grab it you can morph it around you can get into hard to reach areas and not have to worry about dropping it on the floor because if i drop this on the floor i can easily wipe it right off and continue using it without no problem with the regular clay bar you know if you drop it on the floor toss that out because if you don't you're going to scratch up your paint so this right here super easy super convenient check this out Grab your clay luber, spray the surface. And remember, you wanna make sure to be you know, generous with the clay luber, you don't wanna be stingy with it because you wanna have a nice lubricated surface so that the clay, bar glide, or the clay block glides right over the surface. Now this right here, it's super convenient because as you guys can see, I'm not there with like a little patty. You know, I'm not trying to make it difficult. I'm simply using the, the sponge itself to easily just glide over the paint. You know, there's a paint chip right here. I'm just gonna do my best to kind of go around it just cause you know, we can't really do much about that. We just wanna make sure to focus on the areas that we can save such as the paint right here. And same thing, like a regular clay bar, we're never using the clay block. All you wanna do is go simply up and down, left and right. And with the clay block, you don't have to put any pressure. So you don't have to push down on it. You simply want to glide it over the surface and that's easily just going to pull off all that, you know, embedded contamination, pull it right off the surface of the, <laughs> you get. <good? laughs> so once you finish an area, you can go ahead and grab your clay block, set it down and your clay luber, grab yourself a nice mic fiber towel and wipe off any excess of the clay lubricant. Now I did just do this little section right here of the hood just because I want to show you guys the difference between a contaminated side versus a decontaminated side. So I'm just going to do my best to wipe off the excess of the clay luber here. Flip that around to a dry side just to make sure everything is off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel the paint. Now on this side, you're not going to hear much just because there's no contamination on there versus the side that I didn't clay bar yet. Check this out. It sounds very rough. It sounds very raspy. You know, I'm not sure how well the mic caught it, but in person it sounds very nasty and it sounds very raspy. So if your paint sounds anything like that, you want to make sure to decontaminate it by using a clay bar or a clay block. Like I mentioned, for the purpose of this video, I decided to use a clay block just because sometimes I find this a little bit more convenient than a traditional clay bar. But a traditional clay bar still has its uses, you know, since it is a little piece of putty, you can kind of grab a small piece, a big piece. You know, if we have different grades of clay bar as well, so depending on the level of, you know, clay that you need or that is required to remove contamination, you're gonna have to go with your best judgment. You see this paint right here, it seemed a little bit on the medium side for me. So I, you know, the clay block works out great as a light to medium contamination tool. So if you have anything that's, you know, very contaminated, you know, it's been years that the paint has been neglected, years that the paint has been sitting and, you know, hasn't been decontaminated with the clay bar, then that's when you may want to go with the clay bar, such as the heavy one. But if you're doing any kind of like maintenance, if you want to do like quick little light, medium contamination jobs, clay block, it's perfect. All right, guys, so once you finish clay barring your vehicle, now you can go ahead and protect it. Now, whenever you clay bar your vehicle, pretty much what you have just done is you exfoliated your paint and you removed any kind of embedded contamination to reveal a nice, smooth, you know, decontaminated surface. So this is the perfect time to, you know, follow the detailing flow chart, whether you're gonna polish the paint, apply ceramic coating, apply glaze, a sealant, a wax, you know, whichever route you decide to take, clay barring would be like your stepping stone before you go to any one of those. So in the case of this WRX, we are not going to be polishing just because the paint isn't really too bad of in a condition. So, you know, the owner, like I mentioned, he is planning to keep it parked outside. So I want to make sure that he gets the best protection while it's sitting out there. And what better way to do that than applying a sealant like Jet Seal. Now, Jet Seal, it's great because it's a synthetic sealant. So unlike a wax, this right here, it's more refined, it has more protective properties, and it has a lot more durability. So with something like this, you can apply to, you know, Jet Seal is great because you can apply it to paint, you can apply it to glass, 
headlights, tail lights, wheels, chrome, you know, all that good stuff. If it's glossy and it's smooth, slap it on there. Now, Jet Seal is great because, like I mentioned, it's a durable protectant. Now, Jet Seal is going to protect against those harsh UV rays and the harsh elements that, you know, nature has to offer. Jet Seal is super easy to apply. You can apply it just like any other, you know, wax or, you know, cream-based product. All you want to do is shake it up and then you're going to apply a few drops to your microfiber applicator. Now this product is great because you can apply it by machine or by hand. So the way I like to use it is I apply four drops, set that down, and now I'm gonna apply it to the hood. So when I apply it to the hood, I like to kind of, you know, spread the product out as best as I can. And then you simply wanna apply it in straight motions. So I'm gonna be applying it to the paint right here. Now Jet Seal, it's super great because like I mentioned, it's going to protect your paint. It's going to go ahead and create a durable shield of sealant, which is going to protect your paint from those harsh UV rays. So, you know, since the owner's going to be keeping it outdoors, we want to make sure that he has the best in terms of protection as far as like, you know, reflecting and deflecting those UV rays so that this white paint doesn't get dried out, it doesn't get doled out. And, you know, most of all, you know, with these white colored cars, when they get oxidized, they start turning like a yellowish kind of color and you know, personally, it doesn't look nice. You know, you have a beautiful car like this and you're driving around with a, you know, an egg looking paint job. You don't want to be driving around like that. Make sure to protect your paint. You know, Jet Seal, it's super easy to apply. It doesn't hurt you. You know, like I mentioned, you can apply it on your paint. You can apply it on your headlights as well. So, you know, if you're a constant driver, if the car is going to be parked outside in those harsh UV rays, applying Jet Seal to your headlights, is going to be crucial to keeping them nice and clear which is gonna protect them from getting oxidized. It's gonna protect them from getting that yellow film on there, which is not gonna cause you to have the best vision when driving at night. So it keeps them nice and crystal clear. Same thing with your windshield. Now Jet Seal, it's great to apply on your windshield because whenever you drive during inclement weather, what happens? You get water, you get ton of ton of water that lands on your windshield. You're using your wipers and you know, your wipers do obstruct your vision just a little bit, you know, depending on how bad the rain is, you know, the water can kind of drag on your windshield and it can kind of cause your, you know, your vision to be a little bit blurred, which you definitely don't want, especially if you're driving in inclement weather. So to prevent all that kind of water from sticking onto your glass, applying a coat of Jet Seal is definitely, definitely a huge, huge, huge beneficial, you know, thing to do. I would highly recommend it. You know, if you have the product already, you may as well utilize it to its maximum potential by you know, applying it to your paint and all the other areas that you want to keep on your exterior protected. So as you guys see, Jet Seal, it's a huge benefit to your paint and the exterior vehicle. If you guys saw the paint, how it was before, you had a lot of little like brown, yellow specks that landed on the paint and that were in the paint. We removed it with that clay block and now they are no more. Our paint is nice, it's white, it's clean, and it's exfoliated. So to maintain it, to keep it looking that way, remember Jet Seal, wax, ceramic coatings, they all have that protective property. But in order for you to get that, you know, that durable protection, a product like Jet Seal, super highly recommended. If you already have a coating on your paint, such as HydroCharge, you can actually layer a coat of Jet Seal over that layer of ceramic coating to boost the shine of the ceramic coating and to boost the protective properties of it. So that pretty much wraps it up for this, you know, this WRX. Like I mentioned, I try to keep this simple, straightforward. It's, you know, with these colors, with these vehicles, when they sit for a while, they get contaminated and you got to go ahead and, you know, decontaminate it and then re, you know, recode it with the protectant. So, you know, this can all easily be avoided by simply maintaining your ride. So what I mean by that is, you know, washing it on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, making sure that there's always protection on there. You know, if you get ash or any kind of industrial fallout on there and you see it, try to clean it up as soon as you can and your paint's going to look a lot better for a lot longer so that wraps it up for me if you guys like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you guys learned something new today make sure to comment down below as always my name is joey this is chemical guys detail garage and i'll see you guys on our next episode